Hmm. I don't think I have a single flippity dipping buzz blade in this shop. Do I, have I could pillage it off of something. I have a dusty black and blue one. We shall make the sacrifice. This will be a better bait. And I already get a paint scheme kind of to go off of black and blue. We can work with that. Rozzy was uh, drawing some baits with me. Here we go. Buzz bait. Offset with the blade on top, traditional. I'm just not interested in making anything really big today. We're gonna be conventional. And we are gonna have a successful one day. See, that interests me. That I would want to pick that up and catch fish. Get a little bit of gill carving in today. We got time. The bite's gonna be better later in the day anyway. 902. <laughs> One day. <coughs> One day. Is that it? Right there? Did I grab the right piece? Plucked the perfect piece right out of my pile. Crispy clean down to the lines. It's gonna be a chunky little monkey under that buzz blade. But I think I need lots of room to put extra lead into the belly of this thing because you know how buzz blades are usually just chunks of lead under blade. It's a big propeller on top. It needs lots of weight stabilizing that propeller hanging off the bottom. So let's maintain that chunkiness and carve. Let's carve. Big old eye on this thing. Quite a bit of eyeballing went on there, but we got chamfer lines on. Need to sharpen my blade. Okay, freshly sharpened. This piece is carving like butter. I'm going to enjoy this. Those little marks there and there on the top are places not to touch with the blade. It'd be a nice transition into the eye. Flat spots, but I do wanna just barely take that sharp edge down around the eye. Just thought about heating up the lead pot, but I think it's a little too soon. But just know I thought about it. Trying to keep the angularity and shapularity of specific features and whatnot. It's looking good. <laughs> Rough carved. That looks great. Okay, all smoothed off and carved out now. Lead pot. Then we'll drill the hole, big old hole. Think it's gonna be a half inch, already in the drill. In the middle of the belly, that's where. <laughs> that is a silly amount of lead that's going to go in a tiny bait like that. This is silly. And since it's so much, I'm gonna create some grooves on the inside of that lead hole so the lead can grab something. And that just added to the amount of lead that can be fit into this bait. So this just exceeded silly. This is ludicrous. I guess it's gonna be the slow drip today. Am I running out of lead? There we go. Okay, that just needs covered with UV resin once it cools down. Cured, smoothed off, tortured a bit. That thins it out slightly, so it soaks into the wood and gets rid of any bubbles before you do this. That was like 15 seconds. I think I'm gonna throw just one 
hook hanger on this on the back. Kind of like a traditional buzz bait. It's got the single hook. I'll do a treble, but it's gonna be coming off the back. There we go. That hole will just be enlarged and Maybe that's all I have to say. That hole will be enlarged. So a folded over end of this wire will fit in and be secured in there. And the rest of the buzz bait will be made off of that. A nice, even super glue bath coming right up. I've never just dipped a lure in super glue. I should try that someday. I have a lot. Not today though. I don't know how that works. I don't want to ruin this. We're going to brush it on like civilized people. Nice and thin. Try not to reapply it over the same spot. That can be bad because it like what already soaked in and is inside of the wood tries to like break through the coat that you reapplied and kaboom, your lure is all crusty. <laughs> this is looking good though. Smooth as heck. We're ready to paint. Starting with Yeti White. I'm taking a lot of inspiration from a, an actual paint scheme on a bait instead of a fish. There's not a lot of fish that the blue and black blade go good with. Like that does not scream any particular species, you know? So just a dark bluegilly, very blue bluegill. Bluegilly bluegill. Some green in there. Exile green. Big old orange spot on the bottom. Went pretty heavy with that. Molten orange. We're gonna try to get that orange to transition up into that other color a bit better with some chartreuse. Like that. Okay, I gotta figure this out. Something like that. Maybe even that. Probably that. Yeah. I'm gonna cover up that gill a little bit too and just shoot that like that <laughs> with some black. That was quite a bit. Please look good. Oh, it does. Woo. That looks great. I'm gonna spray blue and whatnot over that. It's gonna blend nice. Now, to repeat the process. Like that. I'm gonna pull that down a smidge. Like that. Oh, we need the counter. We need to do that. I'm just mumbling over here, I'm sorry. And again. Oh, dang it, that kind of looks bad. One sec. I like the squiggle. I got It just needs something added right there. Yeah. Yeah, that squiggle towards the back, real aggressive. I like it. It's quite the difference from side to side. That side's a little bit more interesting. I'm gonna add some more black around the eye and on the top and stuff. I feel like this thing needs way darkened up to match the blade. And some straight blue somewhere. There's like no blue on it yet. Pearl blue, somewhere. Probably the scales. I would use masking fluid on these gills, but that can peel up paint if you don't have a layer of clear coat on. So I don't even try. I just accept the overspray. Um, maybe some pearl white, silver, not sure towards the belly, but then definitely some sort of very distinct blue. As blue as the sparkles in that buzz blade. Shining silver. I'm gonna hold it like that to cover up the gill plate. Heat guns are hot. As you can see, that did away with a lot of that dark detail, black stripes. Need to decide on a blue now. Need a pearly one. You know what it's probably gonna be? Pearl blue. Okay, it's feeling thick as heck, so I'm not gonna shoot that straight out the brush. We're gonna reduce it and add some balancing clear. There. That looks a lot better. It's a rare sighting seeing me actually mix paint just to reduce it. Usually I just turn my air compressor up and hope for the best. Here we go. Because it's still very translucent, I faded it way down to the bottom and I left it off the gills. That looks, that's gonna look good. It is time for this video's dose of a scale reveal. Woo, that looks so good. That is good. Look at me going at it already. Didn't even explain what I'm doing. I just needed to hit those gills with uh, that same pearl blue so it makes sense and that makes sense now. I hit the top a little bit too, not too much. I wanna keep some black. That makes sense to me. We're gonna put some pearl white on those little gill plates down there. I'm gonna come in and paint an ear. Probably do some red on the outside of that ear, matching that paint scheme on the laptop back there. Choose some eyes for it, clear coat it, go make it official.
Gotta let the carvings guide your bristles. Massive life lesson right there. Whenever I need a really red red, it's the Tim Gore, blood red. That's my go-to. It just cuts through everything, it doesn't blend, it's just like, it'll put red right there no matter what. It's a merciless red. You know, that looks like a dot, but it makes sense because that's, you know, it is a dot, like a shad dot, but this is a bluegill. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of detail work with the brush on the other side of that shad dot to make it not a shad dot, you know? That's just detail smoke black. And that was a tiny bit of metallic bronze and then it's done. Time for eyes. First, I was gonna go with those. Then, I was gonna go with those. Then I was gonna try to paint my own glass eye because I thought I didn't have anything good. But I completely overlooked something easily overlookable. Those. Not those. I don't know if you can see from here on the picture it has like very slight yellowish and then just blue. But that doesn't look as good as that red. And you know what the red's gonna bring out? The other red around that ear. Lure eye selection reasoning at its finest. Put the point towards the front, and the blue even transitions into that red, and there's some purple in there. There's no purple in the bait, but the, like, oh, that's gonna make it look so good. When I said, oh, I realized I had no way of actually explaining what I meant, but that's not necessary when you see that. Explanation achieved. Wow. Perfect eye. Dead meat custom. Clear coat. Hard Chinese UV resin. Squirted into a container. That is a difficult dead meat custom eye to get over. I feel like I applied more than normal, but I'm gonna let it spin. I need to stop applying that. Okay. It seems perfect. That blue sparkle. From memory, it's it's matching the blade perfectly. I'm glad I went with actually something natural for the rest of it. Even though I was going off of a, a lure paint scheme instead of a fish, that looks pretty natural. I should show you how the blue matches. Look at that, the woolly buggers are out. I mean, that is a complete and utter match. Where did the woolly bug? Did that woolly bugger just crawl away? He escaped. I was gonna show Rosie. she loves woolly buggers. Anyway. Looking good. We're bending wire. Yeah, some thick wire. 0 0.061 inch diameter. That's what the blade's going to stop against. Well, actually, that's what the rivet is going to stop against. On goes the dusty buzzer. This thing's been hanging up in the shop for a long time. And in reference to this paper, the stencil, I need to bend this right there. I kind of want it to be in line with where I already bent. Like that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Okay, buzz blade is not going anywhere for the rest of its life. Using the stencil once again, I marked with a Sharpie where the loop needs to begin. Wire bending pliers go on the other side all the way around, no mercy. Closing that in. You know, minor tweaky adjustments with your fingers, make sure everything's straight. Because it had to bend beside itself, you know, everything kind of got thrown off center. You can just tweak it pretty easily. Left myself a lot of wire to do whatever I need to do in order to get it secured into the bait. Body's ready. It looks spiffy as heck. That is a well done little nugget of a paint scheme. Gorgeous. I determined that the thickness of these flat nose pliers are what needs to be folded over on this wire. Is what needs to be folded over. Let's use correct grammar. Oh, not easy. Good thick wire. Oh, that needed. That needed influenced. Luckily I'm an influencer, because oh my goodness. Just about broke my wrist right there. That's as flat as I could get it and fold it over on itself. Shove it in there. Sweet, I can glue that in. With extreme power thick. Super glue. <laughs> Wooden buzz bait, right there. Boom. Okay, I know that this will sink hard. It's really hard to test in this test tank because I need to keep my rod tip level with the water and I can't really do that all the way back here. 
when I pull up on it, it wants to come on its side, but when I leave my rod tip at the water surface, it's fine. Nothing that a little wire tweaking won't fix. Sounds good. It's buzzing. We have a buzz bait to make official. Let's go. Got the net, got my bag, got my bait. Got you guys, let's go. Straight to a pond, going for the dumb bass. All right, I just saw a giant swirl right at that drain, and then a turtle go in there. See if we can first cast it. What a first cast. Oh, that was a hit. That was a hit. That must be like big sunfish or something. All right, we had a first cast hit. Oh, short struck it. That was from behind. That should have been a fish. I saw that thing. I made eye contact with that fish. Oh, come on. That was another one. They're just like staying under it and bumping it. Ooh. Ooh. This has to have like a bit better hookup ratio than a normal buzz bait with a single hook off the back. There's a treble hook off the back. It can't not work. Okay. It got, it got taken under. I can't even talk. It got took under. No fish. It got taken under. Wow. Are they like hitting the splash? Like just the blade? I don't get what they're hitting because they're not getting hooked. It's a pretty tight package, you know? Kind of unbelievable they're missing this super sharp hook right here. Even if it is a bluegill. I mean, I, yeah, I shouldn't say that. But I know bass have hit this. I made eye contact with one. Oh, come on. That was a fish too. Right when it went... Okay. Okay. <laughs> just okay. Spent another, oh, I don't know, hour at this spot. <sighs> Frustration was the result. They just won't hook up. And then, next spot was like a solid three plus hours. Ooh. Gosh, it's getting hits. I'm so frustrated. I don't know, anguish was the result after that. It hurts, missing fish. Why? That much. Dude, why? I'm completely fine with not getting bites, but if I'm getting bites and missing every bite, Oh my goodness, something about that corrodes my psyche. It's bad. Back at it. Anyway, one day failed, and then the next day. It's getting a little brushy down there. I haven't been down here in a while. I went out on the old yacker doodle, thinking I'm getting up early. All of those weak strikes from the day before shall be solved with the morning bite, river fish, you know. All right, if they're biting, these are river fish. This will be the chew test. River fish don't mess around. If they gotta eat, they eat. So here we go. I ended up putting the buzz bait away. So frustrated, I just put it away. Got the 1.7 inch prey bait out, did some work with it. Fish on. This took uh, like an hour and a half. Hey, we got one. On a 1.7 inch prey bait. Rough, man. I'm quite certain that that would have never hit the buzz bait. It took some extreme finessing. Be free. And even if it did hit that buzz bait, probably wouldn't have hooked up. Fish on. Right by the bank. Little river bass. Feels like, feels nice and chunky. Good, good stuff, be free. <laughs> I'll stop admiring the bass. Really gotta get it right up in their face and they seem to be hugging structure. They're not coming off the structure to chase stuff. There we go. So that's three.
And that's that. F. You know, it looks nice, but that just makes the frustration worse. F for frustration. Hard body, wooden buzz bait. I'm assuming what I needed was a fixed single hook off the back, and that's it. A fixed single hook, it won't get knocked around. I think the ability for this hook to get knocked around, like, and sent all the way up on itself, is the problem. Because fish coming from the bottom, unless they really open their mouth and clamp all the way down on the bait and you pull at the right time, they won't get hooked. I don't know. What? Why do fish get hooked up with crankbait and not this? Why? Why, God? Why? Let me know your theories below. Sometimes you gotta fail hard. I was so certain of success with that bait. It's just a buzz bait, you know? What the heck? But I'm pretty glad to say, thanks for watching. On to the next bait. I decided to end this video, allowing you fellas to watch me struggle up this very steep hill with this 110 pound kayak. Next time I'm definitely bringing a rope. <laughs>